your weather first with Storm Team 5. Good evening, everyone. I'm Storm Team 5 Chief Meteorologist Luke Sample. We have some snow on the way for our Wednesday by 8 o'clock. Snow showers developing, moving in from the south. Expect snow to be likely midday and into the afternoon hours. We go through those snow totals straight ahead in the area's most accurate forecast. Local 5 News starts right now. Your stories, our community. This is Local 5 News with Tom Zelaski, Aaron Davison, and Chief Meteorologist Luke Sampy. Now on Local 5, local election results for primary races, including the race for mayor of Green Bay. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm Tom Zalaski. And I'm Erin Davison. News from your local election headquarters. The field for Green Bay mayor has been narrowed from 8 to 2. Just two candidates now will move on to the general election in April. Here now we'll look at the results. Eric Genrick and Patrick Buckley will be moving on to the April 2nd election as they were the top two vote getters. Patrick Evans came in a close third and former Alderman Guy Zima came in fourth. Joe Moore and Mark Stoyer followed Evans and Zima. And then lastly, Nick Mortensen and Paul Busher rounded out the candidates. Okay, as we just showed you, the top vote getter with 44% of the vote, former state representative Eric Genrich. A local 5's Robin Ogenye joins us now with a reaction from the candidate. Robin? Aaron Tom, as you just said, Eric Genrich won with 44% of the vote, and he decided to celebrate here at his home on Green Bay's west side. Now, Genrick told us he is most looking forward to the general election in April and wants to work for what the people of Green Bay want. He's not letting his large lead tonight get in the way of what he really wants to accomplish during his campaign, which includes investing in the city's infrastructure and making sure local government officials work for the people. Yeah, very excited about the outcome, um, but this is ju really just the first step. This is the primary election, so we move into the, the general uh, election campaign to starts tomorrow. Um, so that's what we're really looking forward to is continuing to articulate that hopeful, uh, forward-looking message with the voters of Green Bay. And we have all of tonight's election results posted on our website, wearegreenbay.com. If you want to take a look at them, just click on the Your Local Election Headquarters tab. But for now, reporting live in Green Bay, Robin Oginye, Local 5 News. All right, now we go to Oshkosh for the Oshkosh mayor's race from your local election headquarters. Top two vote getters are the incumbent mayor, Steve Cummings, and the deputy mayor, Lori Palmieri. Close, close race, 40% to 39%. They'll move on to the general election in April in what is sure to be a very tight race for mayor. And as Robin mentioned, to see the complete local election results, head to your local election headquarters on our website at wearegreenbay.com. Turning now to the other big story of this day. More snow headed our way. Chief Meteorologist Luke Sampy is tracking the storm from the Weather Center. Luke, what can we expect for tomorrow? Well, we will have snow move in by the time we get to about 7 or 8 o'clock in the morning here for Green Bay, the Fox Cities, and also uh, the Lakeshore areas. As you see here, snow is approaching from Iowa, but there's a lot more to go. As We'll show you that here in a moment. We do have a winter weather advisory covering most of the state. Winter storm warnings in the pink color out in western Wisconsin. That's where the heaviest snow will fall, where they're going to pick up over a half a foot of snow easy. So you can see all this moisture work in our direction. Uh, Iowa, Missouri, into eastern Nebraska, far northeastern Kansas. That's where the snow is. That is what's heading pretty much smack dab for the state of Wisconsin. 5 o'clock in the morning, we're going to have snow breaking out from about Fond du Lac southward. And then for Appleton, Green Bay, between 7 and 8 o'clock in the morning, then Northwoods, between 9 and about 10 o'clock in the morning. Looks like 2 to 4 inches of wet, heavy snow for the Door Peninsula, Green Bay, Appleton, Oshkosh, and Fond du Lac, and off to the lakeshore. And 4 to 6 inches of snow expected to the northwest, just to the northwest of the Fox River Valley. So basically anywhere is west of, let's say, Appleton and then north of Green Bay. We have another storm system following this one going into the weekend. We'll talk more about that one coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Luke. And for the latest information on any school closings because of the snow, you can head to our website at wearegreenbay.com. 
Other news now, patients at American Family Children's Hospital in Madison are sure to be warm and cozy thanks to students at Notre Dame Academy. For the second year, students are tying blankets to donate to the hospital at a party called Blankets for a Better Tomorrow. This charitable effort was started by junior Sydney Ditchite, who received a tie blanket when she was at the hospital recovering from an ATV accident. She appreciated the gift and wanted to return the favor. I've always liked helping other people, community service, and I was just thinking about ways that I could help, and I thought about the joy that I felt from this blanket, and I wanted to share that with other children who may be struggling. Sydney has a fundraising page to raise money for the cause. You can find it with this story on our website at wearegreenbay.com under local news. Keeping it local tonight, Jeffrey Buttles entered a not guilty plea today in Wapaka County Court. Buttles was arrested last month in relation to the disappearance of that dog, a two-year-old Great Dane named Gypsy, owned by a neighbor, Justin Beasy. Police determined Gypsy had been shot on Buttles' property and before her body was then taken and dumped into a nearby river. However, Buttles pleaded not guilty today. Supporters of Gypsy gathered outside the courtroom with justice for Gypsy shirts, including Gypsy's owner. This should not happen. Maybe people will think a little bit harder before they do stuff like this because it happens way too often and a lot of times people are, are getting away with it. We know who did it and we're seeking justice. And the next step in this case is a status hearing set for April 5th. In new developments tonight, a 32-year-old man was charged in court today with shooting and killing a man last month in Green Bay. Brian Hatcher has been charged with first-degree intentional homicide in connection to the death of Tavarius Edwards. The 29-year-old was found shot dead in the basement of a home on George Street. Hatcher has also been charged with possession of a firearm by a felon, violating probation, and bail jumping. Bond was set at $2 million. The numbers have come back from the state. Crime in Green Bay is down. According to these numbers, there was a 14% drop in crime this past year. That's on top of a 9% reduction in crime the year before. But while most of the numbers are down, some crimes did see an increase last year. I think one of the reasons why sexual assaults increase is because there's a lot more public awareness of sexual assaults and, and sex crimes in general part of the Me Too movement and all the things we saw across the country the past year. And Chief Smith says despite this reasoning, the increase in sexual assaults is still concerning to his department. Well, local high school students show that they are champs on the ice. Bringing home the first ever ice fishing trophy for their school. And tonight was a big night for WIAA High School Sports. We've got highlights coming up later. And we're going to be trading our sunshine for snow for Wednesday. The latest timing and where the heaviest snow will end up. Plus another storm for the weekend in the area's most accurate forecast coming up next. You're watching Local 5 News with Tom Tulaski and Aaron Davison.